Welcome into another edition of the Heat Report by Chat Sports. I am Nick Roloff, and on today's show, we're talking about Kyle Lowry because there is a little bit of a report that suggests he is on the chopping block and could be moved before the 2024 NBA trade deadline, which, listen, I've been a big proponent of. He's an expiring salary, $30 million, damn near, and you attach maybe a first or a second round pick, you can get off that deal, and it is a very, very valuable asset in the NBA. But make sure you are subscribed because we're about three weeks away from the NBA trade deadline. Can't believe I'm saying that. So stay locked in with everything surrounding the Miami Heat as we count down to that big day on February 8th. We also go live for multiple watch parties a week, including tonight we'll be live against the Toronto Raptors for a watch party if you're watching this on Wednesday. If not, we're still going to be live on Friday against the Atlanta Hawks. So make sure you hit that sub button. But I want to make sure I get the exact quote correctly here because it's coming from Brett Siegel who's an insider for clutch points so take that with a grain of salt if you will but he's actually echoing something that we've been trying to explore and kind of tell you that should happen at least at that deadline so what did Siegel have to say here we go Kyle Lowry has been on the trade block for the Miami Heat dating back to last season which we knew Um, Shout out to Barry Jackson. His production for the Heat has been minimal, and Lowry is in the final year of his contract. For any team looking to free up cap space in the offseason, Lowry could wind up being a great asset for them since he's making nearly $30 million and his money would be coming off the books. So... As I mentioned, like the, the asset is very valuable. To have $30 million just come off your payroll heading into the offseason, that is something that GMs are going to covet because it allows them to have a lot of flexibility going into the this offseason that does feature some pretty solid free agents. Who knows what happens with Pascal Siakam? He is expected to be a free agent, at least as of now, unless he gets traded and is extended. There are some good, solid guys out there, and having that $30 million come off your books is something that a team that isn't going to try to win right now, like, I look at a Hawks team that might be blowing it up. Would they not want Kyle Lowry's $30 million? I mean, they get rid of, per se, we could explore this in a second, but like they get rid of DeJounte Murray, right, who's set to make $30 $30 million a season when his extension kicks in this upcoming year. But now that comes off your books for the future and you actually lose $30 million and free up that space, that's something that's going to be very valuable. We're going to explore why the Heat should make a deal and some potential candidates or I guess trade ideas for Kyle Lowry if he does get moved. But I want to get the pulse of the Heat Nation. Let me know if you guys think Kyle Lowry will actually be traded at the February 8th trade deadline. Type Y if you think he's going to get traded. Type N if you think he stays with the Heat for the remainder of the season. All right, but I do want to talk about why I think it's basically a must for Miami to deal him. And All those reasons I mentioned why other GMs are going to want that potentially in Kyle Lowry coming off their books is the same reason why there's a high possibility Lowry stays with the Miami Heat. We've talked about Mickey Arison, the Heat owner in the past, on how he's been a little bit more financially focused in the terms of saving himself some money, not going crazy over the tax over the past couple of years, it's the main reason why Miami didn't make a play for Bradley Beal because of that contract, the no trade clause. Um, they didn't seem or deem it necessary for the Heat to make that move, and Mickey Harrison didn't want to give up all those expenses. But So that's why Kyle might stay on this team. But when you just look purely at basketball, the Heat need to upgrade at the point guard position. We just watched them on Monday win a game 96-95 to against the Brooklyn Nets, and the offense kind of stunk for most of that game, and the offense has been bad over the last three games, totaling 99-104 and 96. Hopefully they turn it around and start getting back to the 110-115 range and start being a little bit better offensively. Maybe you could attribute some of the struggles to people being out, but I don't like to make excuses. So I'm going to look at why the reason that he can't score. And to me, it's all about pace. Listen, we could talk about the half-court offense as much as we want, but I think the Heat play their best when they get out in transition and run. And I get that that might not be the most ideal game strategy when you have veterans like Jimmy Butler and Kyle Lowry and Kevin Love, 
Well, Kevin Love doesn't run. He starts the break by throwing it ahead. But the reason why I think we've seen success with Jaime Jaquez Jr., Nikola Jovic when he's played, is because these guys get out and run. And when Kyle Lowry gets the ball, he doesn't like to run in transition. He'll throw that occasional horrible half-court lob up ahead and put Jimmy and Bam in hospital ball situations, if you're familiar with that term from the NFL. Um, he'll throw it up and just it creates an awkward landing spot for Bam and Jimmy, and it leads to potential injury risks that I don't think need to be taken. I'd rather have a guard that wants to push the pace, get out, get easy buckets, and then find our three-point shooters. Like That game turned around on Monday against the Nets when Jovic and company got out in transition, found Tyler, Tyler Hero on the outside, and he knocked down back-to-back -back threes from the right wing on that perimeter. That's what sparked the Heat's run. Jovic getting out in transition and finding him. Like I think pace is what benefits Miami the most. You're not going to run a pace-led offense like the Indiana Pacers. That is unsustainable, and especially a team that wants to be a good defensive team like Miami, you can't do that because that also limits your defensive ability to get back in transition. But I do think you mix in some pace with half court, and this offense will flow better. And Kyle Lowry does not like to do that. So getting younger at the point guard position, more athletic, I think is something that would obviously be very intriguing for Miami. And that's kind of why I think Kyle Lowry needs to be moved off of. Now I will counterpoint that and rebuttal my own statement by saying, listen, Kyle Lowry is Jimmy Butler's best friend on the team. That's just a cold, hard fact. So you wonder if Jimmy Butler wants to keep Kyle Lowry around for morale and just keeping him around because his buddy. But he's also shooting 40-plus percent from three this year. So that is another positive of Kyle Lowry. Sure, there's the negatives of not a good point-of-attack defender. Not He's a good team defender. He draws charges. That's well noted. Best maybe charge drawer in the entire NBA when you look at size and just ability to take a hit. Um but he can't defend in the one-on-one -on -one situations. That's a fact. So there's just a lot of room for improvement in that guard spot where if you get a true point guard that can defend, that isn't afraid to run more in transition, find the open shooters, it will only open up the Heat's half-court offense and take some stress off of Tyler Hero's plate, off of Jimmy Butler's plate, off Bam Adebayo's plate. We saw against the Nets, they tried to feed him in the half-court offense on the block a lot. He went 5 of 17 in that game. Want well, to know why? It's because they got to him on 7 seconds on the shot clock and Brooklyn was sending double teams every single time and Bam was forced to put up a horrible shot because there wasn't good spacing. A good point guard, a good floor general will help the Heat get into their offense much quicker, find more open guys, and I think just overall benefit the Miami Heat, which kind of leads me to who is out there for the Heat to use Kyle Lowry's expiring deal to go out and get. We've talked a lot about DeJounte Murray in the past. We've also talked a lot about Tyus Jones. Those are probably the two biggest guys and the two best point guards that are going to be on the trade block come February 8th at that deadline. So I think you can make those deals. Now, it's a little bit more difficult using Lowry's deals to go get those guys because Kyle makes so much more money then DeJounte Murray and Tyus Jones. Jones is making $14 million right now. Kyle Lowry is obviously making 29 So you're going to have to take on another player at $15 million to potentially match that salary. Then you look over at Atlanta. DeJounte Murray is making 18 mil right now before that extension kicks in. So to make a trade happen at the deadline, you need to match that salary. Um, so they're going to have to throw in another guy. Now, I will say this, that this came across – the timeline for me on Twitter, and it caught my eye, and it was very intriguing to me. And I want to lay this out to you regarding DeJounte Murray. Kyle Lowry, Nikola Jovic, the 2027 first-round pick unprotected, and a first-round pick swap. Because there's that report that the Hawks want two first-round picks for Murray. They get a pick swap, and they get an unprotected alongside Nikola Jovic, who is valued at a first-round pick. You trade all of that, and you get both DeJounte Murray back and Sadiq Bey back. And now that intrigues me a little bit because Sadiq Bey is valuable. Uh, yeah, he's 
on not under contract for that much longer and you'd have to pay him to retain him but in the short term you get that point guard in DeJounte Murray so your starting lineup could now look like Murray Hero Jimmy Hawkes and Bam when fully healthy and your sixth man is Sadiq Bey alongside Caleb Martin Duncan Robinson Haywood Highsmith Uh, that is a lineup that could be very dangerous and help the Heat win an NBA championship now there was a report from Barry Jackson outlining a lot of the reasons why he doesn't think they'll trade for DeJounte Murray because if you trade for Murray and it's just the Lowry expiring deal alongside Jovic that could create a difficult salary problem for Miami not this year but in the offseason it does not give them a lot of flexibility and you'd ultimately lose Caleb Martin and Haywood Highsmith in all likelihood in free agency unless you wanted to go way over that second tax line which we've kind of seen that Mickey Harrison doesn't want to do that, right? So I'm kind of struggling to find legit partners. I think there's some easy salary matchers in Utah, really. Could they be interested in moving off Colin Sexton and Kelly Olynyk? They equal Kyle Lowry's money. You look at Brooklyn with Dorian Finney-Smith and Spencer Didwitty. Those also kind of equal Kyle Lowry's money. So there's a ton of avenues Miami can go with to use that Lowry expiring to get multiple role players that match salary and help Miami win this year. The question we are going to have to ask ourselves and pretty much the front office is that are they sacrificing that Kyle Lowry expiring to limit themselves financially come this upcoming offseason because if they do a move at the deadline using that Lowry and give them cap issues you're likely losing Martin and Haywood Highsmith like I mentioned and the people you sign in the offseason are likely going to be vet men guys and maybe just that rookie you pick in the 2024 for uh, first round if you end up keeping that pick as well so That's the question. Are you sacrificing flexibility in the future to make a deal now to help this team win? I kind of lean that way because, listen, I know patience is a virtue, and I'm not going to try to disrespect our front office and Pat Riley and Andy uh, Mickey or Mickey Harrison too. I mean, listen, you can disrespect him, but um, I was talking about Andy Ellisberg as well. Uh, I just think this roster can win, man. I really do. This year, I think they have a chance to win a title if they just get some couple big. Upgrades, especially at that point guard position. This could be the year where Miami gets over the top, and I'm really looking forward to that. So let me know down in the comment section who you want to trade for using that Kyle Lowry expiring deal. This is the Heat Report. I am Nick Roloff. Make sure you tune in for our watch parties and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a thing surrounding the Miami Heat for the rest of the season and into the offseason.